Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to read from text files in Java. So I have a class here set up called Demo Reading Files and you'll notice here that I have a main method and I have some code already written. In this code what it does is creates a scanner object, creates an integer called num, takes an input for the integer from the keyboard and then prints it out. If you know how to read from the keyboard using the scanner class, you're well on your way to reading from files. We're actually going to use the scanner class, but notice here, when we read from the keyboard, we pass the constructor system.in. What we're going to pass the constructor instead is a file object. And that file object is going to point to a file that is somewhere on my computer. So the first thing I want to do here is delete all of this. And like I said, in order to read from a file, I need a file object. So I'm going to create a file object, file file equals new file, and I'm going to call my file in.txt. Now, you can call this whatever you want, but it's important to note that your file, this constructor takes a string, and that has to match the name of your file. If you would like to pass the whole path to the file, so let's say that this file was located on my C drive, right on my root directory, I could write the entire path. But remember, if I'm writing a path to a file, I need to put two backslashes, because backslash is an escape code. If you put one, that's going to compute, confuse Java a little bit. But for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that the file is in the default location which is the Eclipse project folder. So now I've created my file object. All I have to do is create a scanner object. And instead of giving it system.in, I give it the file. And I have an error. Now the error here comes from the fact that this, with the constructor for the scanner that takes a file object it actually might throw an, throw an exception at us. So an exception is, is when something could go wrong. And that specific exception can be found if we look at the documentation for the constructor. So I'm going to pause the video for a second and pull up the online API for the scanner class. Now I'm looking at the scanner class for Java 7. It really doesn't matter which one you look at. Uh, you might be looking at Java 8. And this is the constructor we're using right here. The constructor takes as a parameter a file. So if we click on it, it's going to take us to um, a box that has a little more information. And this is what tells me the exception that might be thrown. If an exception is thrown, I have to handle that exception. I have to manage it somehow. Even if, if I know that it's not going to be thrown because my code is perfect, Java doesn't know that. So there's two ways to, to handle an exception or deal with them. You can either have the method that is that is that the line of code is in, throw that exception, meaning they're just going to throw it away and let someone else deal with it, or you can use a try-catch structure. We're going to look at both in this video. So let's come back down to our program here. And what I'm going to do now is I need to have my method throw that exception. So if an exception appears, I'm going to tell my method just get rid of it. And then there's some default behavior because we're in the main to handle it. To do that, all I do is I go throws, IO, not IO, pardon me, file not found exception. And then it works. Now, some people here will just put throws exception. And if you're ever not sure what exception to throw, say you forget, exception will work and it, and it often works um, if, you're un, if you're unclear about what one to throw. But again, we, don't, we haven't really talked about hierarchies yet, so we don't quite understand why that is. I'm going to keep this for now as file not found exception. It's always good to keep as specific exception as possible because then there's more information that you know about what went wrong and you can deal with that. So I run my file or run my program and I get this. And this is exactly that exception. I don't have a file called in.txt yet. It doesn't exist. So when, when the compiler gets to this line, it basically says something's wrong. It throws that exception in which this method, our main method, can handle. And right now, handling means print out this error message to the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create 
the text file that I want to use. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Okay, one way to do this is to actually do it using your, your Explorer inside your Windows. And we're going to go to the folder and we're going to create the text file outside of Eclipse. So I'm going to go Users, PMISQ, if you're a student at my school, it will be your student number. I'm going to scroll down here and find the actual workspace that I'm working on. And the workspace I'm working on is S2 2014-2015. And now I'm going to find the project that I'm working in. And the project I'm working on is Introduction to Files. So this is the root of that project. I'm going to right click, I'm going to create a new, and I'm going to create a new text document. Now when you create this text document, don't call it in.txt, call it in. And the reason why is that because I've told the Windows that I'm creating a text document, if I put in.txt here, it'll be called in.txt.txt. So there it is. Let's double click and open it, and we're going to put one, two, three, and then we'll save it. So now if I look at my project, which is right here, the file is not there. That's because Eclipse has to refresh the workspace. I press F5 on that project, and there it is. Sorry, I should have said refresh the, the project. So if I click here, there's in.txt. There's the information I put in it. So now if I go to reading files, and I run this, Nothing happens, but there's no error because it can find that text file. The other way to do this is to right click on your project. You're going to create a new, you're going to create an untitled text file. Four, five, six. Actually, let's put numbers in here. One, two, three. And now when I save it, it's going to say, Where do you want to save it? I want to save it to that project, and I'm going to call it in1.txt. So now I have two files in there. So we're going to continue to work with in.txt. And what's important to recognize now is that Java treats that file just like it would if you were typing things from the, from the keyboard. So I can use s.next, s.nextline, s.nextint, and it's going to access the information in the file. What's important to understand is that you have to imagine there's a cursor in the file, and every time you access something, that cursor is going to move to a new location. So when I first start the program, the cursor is going to be right here. But once I type in s.next, it's going to take the first string that doesn't get in, in up to the space. It's going to have no spaces in it, so it's going to actually select that. But then it moves to the next, next line. So you have to imagine as you're using files, you, can, you have to kind of visualize where that cursor is. And I'm going to put here 3, 4, just and you'll see why in a second. So if I come back to my program, I'm going to say system.out. Let's close that. System.out.println. And if I go s.next, and I go system.out.println, s.next and let's add one more click there system.out.println s.next what this is going to do is Eclipse is trying to be helpful so let's get rid of that pardon me is if I come in here to in.txt it's going to read one it's going to read two and then it's going to read three but it won't read four because s.next turns out it ignores the spaces. So let's save this. Let's run it. One, two, three. If I wanted to get four, I would just go system.out.println s.next. One, two, three, four. Now there's a nice line called, called let's, let's get rid of this here. And let's, instead of doing s.next, you could also do s.next line. Now notice how it takes one, two, and then it doesn't take anything else. Let's try, let's put another one there. So again, 
you have to be familiar with these and play around with them to fully appreciate them. But what s.next line will do is it will access the entire line. Now last thing before I wrap this video up. Text files are all strings. And often they'll contain numbers that we want, but those numbers are strings. Um, so what students will often do is they will access a string, store it, and then convert it to an integer. Remember, you can use all the same commands that you used for reading from the keyboard. You can use it when reading from a file. I'm going to read from n1.txt. And now what I'm going to do is, let's look. Remember, in n1.txt, I put actual numbers. So, oops, what I can do now, I'm going to make an int called num1, and I'm going to do s.next int. I'm going to make an int num2, s.next int. But I'm actually going to spell it right that time. So if I run this now, it's actually going to access those first two numbers, but store them as integers. So now, let's just do this. Num1 plus num2 equals now I can actually do some math inside here 1 plus 2 is 3 if I wanted to I could make this 99 and 245 I don't know why I picked those numbers we're going to save the file remember to save it and then I'm going to run it again and it still worked so bear that in mind. If you're reading from a text file and you want it to be an integer, you can actually read it as an integer. I hope this video helped. In the next video, I'm going to read from files again, but I'm going to do it as a method, and, you'll, and I'll talk about why this is a beneficial approach.